All right, I'm back here with Gabby Gunn, and <laughs> it's no longer Gabriela Kunchikova or Kunchikova. You can Google it now. It's, it's Gabby Gunn, G-A-B-B-I. By the way, I used to put the Y in the end there, and she's she's corrected That's me on that. Actually, DSO guys, <laughs> Transatlantic Orchestra musician, Gabby Gunn. Gabby Gunn. So back here with Gabby Gunn, and what do you think of when you think of a great voice? What makes a great voice to you? Everyone's different. I personally love singers, artists, voices that really move me. What does um, that mean? It's a it's kind of abstract thing, right? Like you cannot really, sometimes you cannot really exactly pinpoint what it is because... Is it just technique? It's a is great, it just... no it's not, it's just a technique. Right. It is emotional expression, it is the human being or, I don't know, spirit, soul okay. of the artist that speaks to me in a way. And they have the voice as an instrument, but they use it in a way that it makes me really feel something. I personally honestly feel like there's less and less of singers like that. But for example, every time I go back to Whitney Houston singing the national anthem, the Super Bowl, mm -hmm. from what I've seen in the documentary since she spent 20 minutes learning the arrangement of that, mm -hmm. they were all stressed out uh, that she might well not know exactly where to sing, how to do it. She got on the stage, she was truly professional, and I can re-watch that over and over and over again, and I always get, get goosebumps. the goosebumps. Okay, well, so the goosebumps is like... What so so here's, here's, here's a question, because this has been different me. When I th what I think of it as a great voice isn't just a big voice or only an emotional voice. But as I've maturated over time, matured over time, has there ever been a singer that's caught you off guard that you never would have thought you would have liked? And has there been a singer that maybe you didn't like in your youth that you would come to appreciate and grow more later as you appreciated their artistry and how they spoke to the people of their generation? Uh, I, I think it changes all the time because we, we evolve, we right. change. Mm -hmm. I personally, when I was a kid, I. I had a beautiful childhood, I had great parents, I didn't have so much trauma early in my life. So some of the dark stuff, really really dark art, when people really talk about or sing about trauma or, or very dark moments in their lives, I kind of couldn't relate to that, it was too mm -hmm. dark for me. Sure. Not until I lived my personal uh, losses and when I lost people that I truly loved and, and I went through my own, own kind of dark night of the soul, it's very interesting how suddenly some of the, even some of the bands that were very, very dark, but not in, in a bad way, just like emotionally kind of trying to express themselves from mm -hmm. not so much light, but a little bit more of, the, we live life light and we live dark, like we, we know, we get to know mm -hmm. each other and, and then appreciate, like mm -hmm. the more darkness I went through, the more I appreciate the light. and. Um, so th that's kind of the darkness that I talk about. I suddenly, when I went through what I went through personally, I started to appreciate actually very heavy and kind of darker bands that till that, like 10 years ago, they still were kind of a noise for me. It was just like, sure. I couldn't get myself into it. I was just like, I don't understand. Like, what are you trying to say? What are you trying to express? Not until I lived it. Right. I really could kind of like, oh my gosh, like, I relate to this lyric so much now. So. It is me changing, actually kind of as a fan and evolving that got me into different bands and different singers that, that in the past I was just like, ah, oh, he's just screaming, like whatever. Right. Well, I remember um, I was never a Nine Inch Nails fan and I was never even a Johnny Cash fan in the sense that I wouldn't go put on a Johnny Cash record. And I remember when Hurt came out and I saw the video and I was just like, wow. I still think that may be one of the most emotional greatest videos that I think has ever been made. Johnny Cash Hurt, if you haven't seen it, I really encourage you to see it. And I love what Trent Reznor said about it. He said, it's no longer my song. Like, here he wrote it, it was his experience, it's no longer my song, it's Johnny's. Wow. And I was like, wow. I remember I was in a club, I think I was around 17 or 18 years old, and it was a jazz club. And I was actually there with a guitar player friend of mine who just won LA Guitar Wars. And so he wanted me to come down and check out all these guitar players that were playing. And I remember John Coltrane, I forget what song it was on, it came on, but I didn't even know John Coltrane, I was like a rock guy, like John Coltrane. And it was just a cacophony of notes, just, you know, stuff. And, but somehow I remembered the song, or it wasn't even a song, it was just, I'll explain that. But anyway, so I remember this piece, and 
I, I think it was 17. And then I remember being in a similar club about in Glendale, like 20 minutes from the same club, hearing the same exact song. The first time I heard it, it was just literally a cacophony of notes. Just didn't make sense to me. Right. The second time I heard it, it was like, this is brilliant. Because it was all of these guys soloing all at the same time, not as in interrupting each other, not like Dixieland jazz can be like that, but but all of a sudden it made it made the song. It was like this woven together thing of all these guys going off, but was like making a song, John Coltrane. And then it, my, my level of consciousness as a guitar player, it just it was elevated to such a different degree. And so as I've gone through life, I've recognized so many different artists that I didn't necessarily appreciate or like when I was younger. You know, sure. so I guess what was it what makes a great voice? Like where do we start with this? No, 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 no. Like it's, it's I think it's like artists if they evolve their themselves. We can say the in the other way. I have bands that I loved ten years ago. They evolved, changed yeah, sure. the direction completely because they live their lives and suddenly I cannot relate to them anymore. Right. And I just will not listen to some of sure. the albums. Yep, me too, have. actually. Yep. So it goes yep. It, and yep. it's just both directions. It's, yep. it's, it's who you are evolving as a fan, you're evolving as an artist, and it's where you meet. Yeah. You know, in life yeah. somewhere. Which is just kind of fascinating for sure. Like really interesting. But for me, I personally love to go to shows when I kind of just I am moved so much that it, I have goosebumps, I almost cannot breathe. And that for me would be the ultimate voice that I just sit there in kind of like, she or he makes me feel in a way. And I, you know why I say that? I actually say that with the arrival of the artificial intelligence, you know, like when they're now saying that the AI basically in the future will be able to take any kind of voice and imitate it. Like they will be able to take, but they're still like they even now like they, they could take Whitney Houston, who you know passed sadly years ago, and and could in a way recreate replicate replicate song um, that would sound like she's singing. But the question is, is the emotion going to be yeah, there? The soul and the spirit. Is the soul and the spirit going to be there? Yeah. And is mankind in a way on the edge of wanting more of that feeling? Like we want to be moved, we want to have those goosebumps, or we want the auto-tune, artificially generated kind of non-emotional numbness. Yes, I was going to use the word numbness. Right. Yeah. Um, that That's the question. I know which side I'm on, um, <laughs> but I don't know for the rest of the <laughs> Me either. We're going to save that for our next question. All right, you guys, thank you. We're going to move on.